Oh my God, guys, look, I had to show you this. It's a four leaf clover. And now it's my four leaf clover. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. You saw correct. I was out at school when I saw a four leaf clover. Oh my gosh, I am so excited about this. And look how big it is. Oh, this is gorgeous. A legit four leaf clover. Like you can even see that it's bug bitten. And I didn't just find one four leaf clover. I found all the four leaf clovers. Yes, I did. Look at that. I think one fell in there actually. And they aren't just four leaf clovers. I think there's a few five leaf clovers in here. Watch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six four leaf clovers. The one that's in here, as you can see. I also have five leaf clover. And I have this guy who isn't a four or five leaf clover, but it it looks like it tried to be a four leaf clover. Like it's one leaf that has two of those middle lines in it. All these guys came from one spot. It's, it's incredible, I love it. And so close to St. Patrick's Day too. Which brings me to my art. I am going to draw a clover in doodles. And I think I'm gonna use this guy, our original guy. This is gonna be my reference right here. Let's do it. So I drew out the clover before actually deciding how I was going to fill it with doodles. I just wanted to have the sketch down. I feel like I did really good on this sketch. I'd never actually sketched a real life clover before and I think it came out pretty good. I really wanted to incorporate the leaves overlapping each other when I did the doodles but I wasn't really sure how to incorporate that because I had never done doodles like that before. Usually, my doodles just overlap each other. Each individual shape overlaps another shape. So I wasn't sure how to make like a whole plane of doodles overlap another whole plane of doodles. But I figured that was something to figure out as I was doing it. So it was a problem for future me to figure out. At this point, I decided to test out the different colored markers that I have. These are all felt tip fine liner type markers. I have Stabilo and Stedfler. I grabbed all my greens and some of my browns and just tested them out and compared them to my four leaf clover to see which ones would match the best. I decided on that light green. For I decided on the lightest green from Stabilo, a medium green from Stabilo, the kind of tannish yellow from Stabilo, and then the dark green from Stedler. And then I did a little test to make sure they worked together. So I chose the colors that I did for the different parts of the clover. The light green was supposed to be those lines in the middle of each leaf, the medium green for the body of the clover, the dark green for like the shadows or any dots that appeared on the clover that were darker so that's why the dark green is that middle crease and then the brown for any torn or bug bitten pieces so these colored markers aren't ones that i'm used to using i've used them before in the past on other projects so i know that they're good and i know that they're precise but it was interesting using them again especially for this long Pens like this are often really juicy. They give out a lot of ink. So the ink was feathering just a little bit underneath the dark green, but that was fine. I was able to cover it up okay. The interesting part of it is that the other colors were soaking up into the paper and kind of giving it a watercolor effect. There was, you know, darker spots and lighter spots. I thought it looked pretty cool, so I was totally fine with it. So like I said, I've never really done anything this extensive with colored markers like this before. So it was really interesting combining these four colors to try to make a recognizable piece. After having done a little bit of the work, I really did not like how the dark green looked against the other colors. I felt like it just didn't match. 
when I did the testers, it all looked really good, but I didn't draw that much of the dark green. I should have tested other colors together. There's another color that I really like after looking back and reviewing all the colors available. It was like a forest or an olive green. It's, it's a beautiful color and I feel like that would have made this pop a little better, but that's okay. Everything is always about learning. It was around this time that I really started thinking about how to get the leaves to look like they are overlapping. The idea I got was to draw my thick border around the entire leaf, matching the colors to what's on the outside of the leaf, and see if that would be enough to make the leaves look like they were overlapping. Since drawing borders like this around groups of doodles is kind of a recent addition, I haven't realized how long it takes to do, but it definitely makes all the doodles pop so much more. Watching myself draw these doodles, I'm realizing that all of the colors sort of look disjointed from each other. I probably should have done a little better in terms of blending. I'm not really sure how to blend them. The only thing I can really think of is kind of mixing the colors a little bit more, like within the doodles, but I'm sure it would have been possible to also just mix the colors. Like to draw doodles that were multiple colors. That probably would have given it a little bit more of a lifelike feel. The dark line in the middle, it just doesn't really look like a crease. It sort of just looks like a dark line in the middle. But again, I learned something new, and maybe in other projects involving these pens, I can figure out better colors, um, better color matching, and more blending. After I had drawn a little bit, I did notice that doing that border around the first leaf did make it look like the leaf was overlapping the second leaf, so I decided to draw the border around the second leaf. And I think these borders really helped with my overlapping plane situation. The groups of doodles actually do look like groups of doodles, which is great. That means I've figured out a way to make my doodles overlap each other, not just within each doodle, but for groups of doodles. I wonder how many times I've said doodle at this point. So it was while drawing the second leaf that I started to get a little more loose with the doodles and started to get a little more, um, lazy. <laughs> so while the first leaf has such nice, small, precise doodles, the second, third, and fourth leaf progressively have larger and larger doodles. And that's because at some point I just wanted to finish. I just wanted to get this project done and out for St. Patrick's Day. And you can't really tell unless you're looking for it. So I don't know why I'm pointing it out to you, but there it is, full transparency. Another note about these pens is that they started running out of ink pretty early. Towards the end of the clover, the inks felt more dry, they weren't as juicy, and that kind of surprised me. The last time I used these pens was probably about a year ago, and before that, I hadn't even used them that much, and I'm not even sure if I've used these colors before. So that was a little bit of a disappointment, because I was expecting to be able to do multiple projects with them, but that's okay. These pens are designed to be disposable and replaced, so it's not really a big deal, and I'm pretty sure the pens are affordable anyway. So I definitely wanted to get this video out for St. Patrick's Day because it's a clover, and I was originally thinking that I would actually add St. Patrick's Day themed symbols to it. So like a leprechaun, maybe another four-leaf clover, a pot of gold. I was going to try and throw in a reference to the leprechaun movies, but I didn't end up doing that because I wanted the four-leaf clover to be more nature-like, I guess. But you can see the symbols that I had drawn out here. And here is the final piece. I am surprised at how well this turned out. I don't have very much experience with colored markers, especially in fine liner form. So this came out much nicer than I was expecting it to. 
Even though I think I chose the wrong color for these middle lines, it still came out looking nice. I mean, you can definitely tell that this is supposed to be a clover. And this was for sure a piece of experimentation because, you know, I was using markers I haven't really used like this before. I was drawing from life. I was doodleizing what I drew from life. I was combining colors and overlapping doodle planes and just all kinds of madness here. But that's what we do here. We experiment with madness. Alright guys, we've reached the end of the video. If you liked my video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time I post a video, please hit that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. And now I'm going to leave you with our quote for today. The universe works in crazy ways. Your good luck will come in waves, and so does your bad. So you have to take the good with the bad and press forward. By Nick Cummins. Okay guys, I hope you ink well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!